All right, so in this video we're checking out the Valotrick Nomad 1. This is the step-through version. There's also a high-step version that has the bar across the top. Uh, the diff two different versions are for people of different rider heights. Um, the step-through version here is going to accommodate uh, people 5 foot 1 to 6 foot 4, and the high-step version uh, is going to be for taller riders 5 foot 6 to 6 foot 9. There are four different colors of each version. So this step through version here, this is the cyan, or I guess uh, it kind of looks like turquoise to me, but you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Also comes in mango, sky blue, and uh, I believe green is the, uh, the fourth color. And then the high step version comes in mango, indio gray, sand, and forest. So there's a bunch of different uh, colors and styles for different people that want a different look. So obviously this one comes with a giant uh, 26 inch wheels, um, six, uh, 26 by four inch fat tires. So the frame here is an aluminum alloy, uh, very strong. Shouldn't have any problems with those people. Can hold up to I think 300 or 400 pounds. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, integrated cable management into the frame itself. So very clean look. And uh, if you weren't looking for a battery, it's hard to know this is actually an e-bike. So if you're kind of looking for that stealth look, uh, this one is definitely one you want to check out. Uh, the wires are all tucked away inside the frame and uh, you can't even tell it has a battery. So it looks very stealth. Doesn't look, it just looks like a normal regular bike. The paint job on this is really nice. It's this powder coated um, sort of matte uh, finish and it just looks very premium to me. Uh, very clean and also all the welds on the on the frame itself are also They're very 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 nice looking very clean So you do have a front fork suspension here to smooth out the ride a little bit it has 80 millimeters of travel It is adjustable and it has a lockout. So the motor back here is a 48 volt 750 watt 1200 watt peak and gives you a torque of about 75 Newton meters and again So the battery here as you can see very stealth it comes out of the top of the frame, which is nice. I think a lot of the other bikes, they come out of the bottom and so if that um, latch breaks, the battery will pop out, which is kind of bad. So very unlikely this will happen in this model. It's a 48 volt, 692 watt hour. I believe it's 14.4 amp hour battery. It's very large. I think it uh, gives you 55, 52 to 55 miles of range. One of the things that is notable about uh, this bike is that it is UL2271 certified. So that's all the electronics. So if you're looking for a bike that's gone through laboratory testing and certification, especially on the batteries and the charger, it is UL certified, which is pretty rare amongst a lot of e-bikes out there. Another thing to note about the cells inside the battery, these are, they call, they're calling them Tesla grade, uh, 21700 size cells, those are the larger cells and they're made by LG or Samsung. Uh, most other e-bikes come with 18650 cells, a little bit smaller. So these are gonna have probably more longevity and can handle the, the, the load over the longer period of time better. So here's the uh, display, it's a three and a half inch backlit LCD. Go ahead and I'll turn on the bike here. And you can see here it's very bright and in, even in totally sunny conditions, you can see it very clearly. Uh, it is black and white, not a whole lot of details here, but it just gives you speed and your, your odometer and also your pedal assist numbers. There is a small uh, USB port here on the bottom. You can plug in your uh, accessories and devices, charge up your phone, etc. So the uh, charge port for the battery is right here but underneath this flap. You can't take the battery out if you want to charge it outside of the bike. The charger itself is a 48 volt, uh, three amp charger and it takes about five to six hours to fully charge. So this bike does feature a 180 millimeter uh, disc brake rotor in the front and in the rear. Uh, the hydraulic brakes here, I don't know who makes them, they're not branded, uh, but I have uh, ridden this a little bit and the stopping power is uh, more than adequate for the bike. So taking a look at the handlebar here, it's a uh, I'll call this like a beach cruiser style handlebar. It's 700 millimeters across. It's very wide and it does sort of uh, slope back a little bit. So it allows you to sit more upright in the bike, which is more comfortable for a lot more people. Um, you don't have to bend over as much. But on the handlebar, you got your throttle here. 
Uh, if you want to just ride throttle only, you got your bike controller there to power on and also plus and minus for your pedal assist levels. You got your shifter here for the gears in the back. There's eight levels of shift or eight gears on this one. And then these are your handbrakes. And again, the wiring, and it's very clean on this one here. Wire management is very clean and everything goes right into the frame. So it gives it a very clean look. Got a nice bright LED headlight in the front. These uh, grips are pretty comfortable. Um, you know, they have an ergonomic shape. No complaints there, not uh, too rough or hard, uh, but also not too mushy either. And the uh, gears back here, there's eight gears total. This is a Shimano Altus shifter. And for the technical folks out there, it's a 13 to 34T. The chain is a KMC Z8. And the uh, par actual part number on the derailleur in the back here, the 8 speed derailleur, is the RD M310 from Shimano. And last but not least, uh, this bike has a maximum load capacity of 440 pounds. Uh, you can get some um, accessories here, like a rear rack and a front rack. So if you want to use this as a cargo hauler, uh, you can obviously carry your weight as well as a bunch of other cargo, and this frame can handle it no problem. So last thing to note is uh, the fenders here, they're plastic, but they have a wide coverage area, so are very unlikely that you're going to have any water splashes, especially here in the front. I like the fact that it does come all the way down, and so even if you're uh, splashing in water, you're probably not going to get too wet with this one. So just a few notes here on the unboxing and building process. It was uh, very easy on this one. Uh, pretty typical with a lot of bikes, but this one, I don't know, overall the, the whole feel from the very beginning had just a premium feel. Uh, the packaging was a lot nicer than typical. Um, everything looked really clean. It was, you know, again, uh, it, you know, typical build process for a lot of these e-bikes. You do have to, one thing to note is on the front handlebar attachment. You do have to loosen up some screws in the front to so read the instructions and twist it around because it's, it's actually packed in backwards. So you just want to make sure you turn that around before you attach the handlebar. Uh, but the rest of the build process is fairly straightforward. Uh, you put on the front tire and the front fender, attach the front headlight, and that's pretty much it. One thing to know about the battery is that it has some foam pieces that prevent it from actually locking in so it doesn't actually uh, put power into the bike when it's in, in shipping mode. Uh, you want, there's actually one that's visible that's on the outside, you want to pull that out, but then there's another one that's kind of underneath that I didn't see, and if you don't pull that out, uh, you won't be able to plug in the battery completely, so make sure you pull that one out as well, and then the, the battery will go in no problem. Okay, so I'm in pedal assist level zero at the moment, and I'm just basically using my own pedal power uh, human power here instead of the e-bike. No battery power being used in pedal assist level zero. And I'm going about 10 miles an hour. Um, I believe this is a cadence sensor and I'm just uh, doing some just general pedaling. I'm on flat surface here so I'm not really, it doesn't really require, require a lot of effort to maintain this speed, although it's not super fast. So I'll go ahead and put it into level two, or I'm sorry, assist level one. And now I can hear the motor you know, on zero with no power. There's no motor, no motor whine. Got a little bit of motor whine now. And I'm not really going that much faster on pedal assist level one. It's like about 10 and a half miles an hour. So I'm picking up a little bit of speed here in pedal assist level one. Um, not really applying much more effort. But I'm going about 11 and a half, 11 to 11 and a half miles per hour does fluctuate a little bit. But this is probably how you're going to get that maximum range of 55 miles, is going to a lower pedal assist level and just slowing your speed down, and you're going to get way more range. Obviously, if you're going really fast and uh, using all battery, you're going to have less range. All right, let's uh, knock it up to level two. And this is uh, pedal assist. Again, I'm just pedaling. Let's we'll see how what kind of speed it gets up to. So it looks like I'm going about 12 miles an hour in level two, so not a lot of uh, speed difference between level one and two. Okay, let's go ahead and put up to three. Okay, now I had just a 
all of a sudden a pretty big burst of energy there. So going from two to three, the speed picks up and the power picks up. from two to three the power definitely picks up the motor winds a lot louder and I'm going to, I'm approaching about 15 miles an hour in level three go to level four and now we're we're going about 17 almost 17 miles an hour and pedal assist level four all right let's go to level five So now we're just going to do throttle only. Back to level one. No pedaling. Let's see how fast we're going to go. So uh, this bike seems to limit the throttle only speed to whatever the pedal assist level speed is. Some bikes will just give you full speed no matter what pedal assist level you're in. This one, uh, the controller does seem to manage the speed uh, based on the pedal assist level. So I think that's actually a, a nicer feature and I wish more bikes had that. So we're going about, it looks like the speed's about the same, about 10 miles an hour in level one. All right, let's go to level two, throttle only. And it looks like uh, eh, it's about the same speed levels on throttle only. So it looks like around 12. Three. So level three, we're going about, yeah, it's about 15, looks like a little under 15 miles an hour. So I do like the fact that it has distinctive levels for e our speeds for each level. All right, let's go to four now. Yeah, it's 16 and a half, seven, 17, Still picking up more speed. And if we go to level five, we're gonna hit that 20 mile an hour limit. Yep, hit about 20 miles an hour and that's about it right here. So let me talk a little bit about how the bike rides. Uh, it's very comfortable overall. Even though the, uh, there's no rear suspension, the seat's pretty, pretty comfortable. Uh, it's not super mushy, but it's, it's got a firmness, but it's wide enough where it, it, it's able to handle my weight no problem. I don't feel uncomfortable or feel like it's gonna hurt. And I've been riding here for a while now. The uh, front fork suspension does help with the bumps, but I've been you know, riding this mostly on pavement, sidewalks, uh, not really off-roading this, but you can uh, off-road this a little bit if you want, because it does have the knobby tires and the big wheels. I think the fact that it does have very large wheels and they are flat tires does help with the ride in terms of the comfort. I would say if you want to ride this on some dirt paths and some more rough surfaces, I would recommend uh, deflating the tires to a lower power pressure. They'll also help with the comfort of the ride. I definitely do like uh, the wide handlebars on this bike. A lot of uh, um, other models have their narrower handlebars, which sometimes feels like a, uh, it's less to stable at higher speeds. This one is definitely stable in the slope back nature of the handlebars. It allows me to lean back a little bit more on the bike. Uh, I feel like I'm sitting more upright. It's just overall more comfortable, especially if you don't have a great, if your back isn't in great shape, then uh, this, uh, this handlebar definitely helps a lot in that regard. Yeah, but overall I'm pretty happy with the bike. 
definitely would recommend it, especially at this price point. Um, yeah, it just feels like you get more value out of the bike at this price point compared to a lot of other bikes. Anyway, there'll be a link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. I'll do it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.